I want to introduce our next speaker. I have great delight in being able to introduce Jeff Sluka to you, Associate Professor um, from the School of People, Environment and Planning at Massey University. And I think, if I'm right, he's going to be talking a little bit about jobs and employment side, what these free trade deals mean for people like you and me. Thank you. Thank you for giving me your time and congratulations for being here. I'm an academic and it's the responsibility of academics to tell the truth and expose lies and that's why I'm here today. <laughs> My interest in free trade agreements is their impact on poverty, democracy and the environment and indigenous peoples. In my political anthropology class I teach that these free, so-called free trade agreements have globalized poverty, undermined democracy, contributed to the environmental crisis which is currently the greatest threat humankind has ever faced. And in my endangered cultures class I teach that they have been an unmitigated disaster to the world's indigenous peoples. The TPP is a supersized trade agreement. It's described as a trade agreement on steroids. But look at the results of the other trade agreements that have gone before this, particularly the GATT and NAFTA. They promised the glories of globalization and prosperity across the land, but the only thing they actually globalized was poverty. They made multinational corporations obscenely profitable, but they destroyed the lives of millions of workers. They did not create jobs. Instead, they contributed to mass job losses, waves of forced migration, soaring inequality and environmental degradation. The overall global result of these free trade agreements has been that the rich have gotten richer and grown more powerful, while everyone else has gotten poorer and more powerless. The real promise of TPP is that it will lead to even more obscene prof corporate profits for the 1%. But job losses, lower wages, higher prices, loss of sovereignty, loss of democracy, less internet freedom and environmental destruction for everyone else, and genocide against indigenous peoples. John Key, John Key claims that there, are, uh, that, there, that there are billions of dollars in economic prom benefits. John Key is a bankster. He believes in trickle-down economics. These so-called free trade agreements are classic trickle-down economics, which we all know is a form of zombie economics which doesn't actually work. Trickle-down economics is like believing that if you put petrol in your radiator, it will trickle down to the petrol tank of your car. The system simply does not work that way. Experience is proven, 20 years of experience now with GATT and NAFTA and other free trade agreements has proven that 99% of the benefits of these so-called free trade agreements go to the top 1%. The corporations, the banks, rich investors reap 99% of the benefits and they literally make out like bandits and we, everyone else, get what's left. In short, the rich get gold, the gold and we get the shaft. The TPP is a terrible deal, which isn't even mainly about free trade. It's about monopoly and corporate power amounting to a corporate takeover. It mostly does not, in fact, deal with trade. It mainly deals with establishing a partnership for corporate protectionism. Nations that join must conform their laws and rules to the agreement strictures, effectively supplanting sovereignty and canceling our right to be self-governing. It does this by handing foreign corporations the power to overturn New Zealand laws if their profits are threatened. In this way, the TPP gives away much of our sovereignty to corporate lawyers and it creates virtually permanent corporate rule over us. The central danger of the TPPA is what negotiators call the Investor State Dispute Settlements, or ISDS. The treaty allows corporations to sue governments for hundreds of millions and possibly billions of dollars before an arbitration panel composed of just three corporate lawyers, at which other people have no representation and which is not subject to any form of judicial review or appeal. The corporate lawyers who sit on these panels are beholden only to the companies whose cases they adjudicate, who at other times are their actual employers. So outrageous is this arrangement that even The Economist, usually a champion of corporate power and trade treaties, has come out against it. The Economist calls investor state dispute settlement, quote, a way to let multinational companies get rich at the expense of ordinary people. 
Already, thanks to the insertion of this power into much smaller trade treaties, big business is currently engaged in an orgy of litigation whose purpose is to strike down any law that might impinge on their anticipated future profits. The tobacco firm, as you know, the tobacco firm Philip Morris is currently suing governments in Uruguay and Australia for trying to discourage people from smoking. The oil firm Occidental was awarded $2.3 billion in compensation from Ecuador, which terminated the company's drilling concession in the Amazon after finding that Occidental had broken Ecuadorian law. The Swedish, firm com the Swedish company, as mentioned by the previous speaker, Vattenfall, is suing the German government for shutting down nuclear power. An Australian firm is suing El Salvador's government for $300 million for refusing permission for a gold mine over concern it would poison the drinking water. Here's, a, here's an example of what it could look like in practice. In the future, if a more progressive government than the one we have now <laughs> wanted to strengthen laws to protect our coastlines or from dr oil drilling or to protect our, protect our national parks from mining, then foreign companies like State Oil or Shell could potentially sue New Zealand for the loss of profits, a hund hundreds of millions of dollars, possibly billions of dollars. John Key says that ISIS is a threat to New Zealand which we must fight, but that the TPP isn't a threat and that should be endorsed. This is a denial and perfect inversion of reality. ISIS is not a threat to New Zealand, but the TPP is, and we should fight the TPP and not ISIS. It is true. It is truly bizarre that our government, which is leading the campaign in favor of the TPP, because in doing so, on behalf of corporations and corporate profits, they are essentially endorsing the abandonment of our sovereignty. So I urge you, you already have, I urge you to urge your friends to join the resistance, make democracy work for us all, and help flush the TPP. Tenakoto.